So I've set the context. I said, hey, I'm trying to build a dashboard with my shipment data. The data is in Excel. These are the headers. The data goes from April 2022 to August 2023 in about 3,000 rows. Um, can you suggest some KPIs for my dashboard? So usually when you say business performance, uh, you would create some KPIs or measures or metrics, and then you'll build the dashboard against that. So this is the question, but you can't just directly ask that question. So we are saying this, and we have given you given it the columns that we have. You could also give the other table columns. We are going to improvise and later on add all of that. Uh, but for now, I'll add this, and then it's going to start uh, spitting out some some KPIs. I think it's going going oh, okay so this is really good it has given me 20 kpis now you can see that i'll, I'll go through these in a minute but at least if you just scan it you can see some of the things like customer acquisition cost or retention rate or uh, conversion rate those are kind of hard to calculate with the kind of data that i have i don't have some of the supporting elements, but you wouldn't know that if you are not familiar with the business, uh, you might just assume that those are what we needed. So I'm just going to read through this a little bit. Certainly building a dashboard, blah, blah, blah. Total sales. This is the overall. Okay. We understand that total boxes sold. That is something that we can do sales per month average. Okay. So this is uh, self-explanatory by salesperson, by geography. So same sales total information is broken down by these individual thing. And then product uh, level stuff, trend of the sales, revenue versus costs, and then profit margin. So this is actually one of the first decent KPIs that I'm seeing. Everything else is kind of obvious to you. If you are in this business and you're working as a data analyst in the organization for a while, Chances are you might already come to that. Even profit margin, I, I would say we would all know that, but at least this is one of the derivative ones from what we have provided. Even though in the columns that I have, where are they? I have not told that we do have cost information. So somehow Chat GPT made an assumption that there might be cost somewhere, and it's just figured out that from those two you can calculate profit margin. Growth rate is also an interesting one. I think those are uh, some things that we can start thinking about. So now that it has given you some pointers, uh, let's uh, give it more information. This is where, while you can kind of try to have back and forth conversations with it, it might be a lot more helpful and useful if you actually do the work a little bit and then go back to it for more. So I'm going to keep that session open. Uh, and again, like I want to highlight that if you ask the same questions at your end for chat GPT, you will see a different set of answers than I see. You might see same ones, uh, but it's also likely that you will see different ones. So that is good, but I want to know, go ahead and kind of handpick some of them. Uh, here, my, uh, my goal as a as a presenter is twofold. One, obviously, to kind of help you out navigate how to use ChatGPT with Excel. But the second thing is, I also want to do stuff in Excel and introduce some ideas and concepts to you and help you get things done with Excel. 